Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WPLS. Uh, we are into a fantastic show, and thank you for tuning in, and thank you for checking it out. Our next guest is an author, poet, singer, songwriter, and a cultural icon in the arts. She joins us today to speak about her legacy and how uh, she has continued to preserve African-American culture and highlight some of the upcoming projects that she will be working on uh, this year and beyond. So please welcome to the show, Na that's my Nana, Nana, Nana Camille Yarborough. She's in the house. She's also a Make the Great Honoree. Welcome. It's always a pleasure to see you. And to see you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you again. Yeah. Uh, so, so you've been doing so many, say it again. It's always good to meet good spirits and you have yes. that quality yes. about you. I, I, feel, I feel you too. Thank you so much. Nana, you've done so many wonderful things throughout your career and you continue to do so, what stands out in your mind right now as uh, some of the most important work that you, you've worked on or that you wanna work on? The fact that I managed to grow up under very difficult circumstances and conditions uh, on the South side of Chicago because I had a vision. My vision was opened up to me when was lifted when I discovered the arts, when I discovered dance when I became a student of the arts, and when I began to understand that there's a spirit in me. That's how I opened my children's book. There's a spirit that lives inside of me. It keeps growing, it never dies. Sometimes when I'm afraid, it trembles. Sometimes when I'm hurt and ready to give up, it barely flickers, but it keeps on loving. It keeps on giving, it never dies. So that is what has taken me through whatever, coming from Chicago, uh, auditioning for and being in the Catherine Dunham company, traveling the world, coming back to New York, getting into some Broadway shows, doing, uh, finding myself as an actress, the whole thing. But the most important thing to me is in that song that I wrote called Praise You, which was Great. taken, yeah, of, uh, the uh, British um, musician heard it and put some of his music to it rhythmically and it became an international hit, that's great. But the important thing is the, self, the spirit praise you. That's what I'm trying to tell myself, trying to tell the world that we're, if we're into that, then we are, our creativity makes a good difference. And that's what I want to do, make a yeah. good difference. Now you mix your spirituality with the arts because that is important also. Absolutely, that's me. Um, and I had to find myself because, you know, in theater, many things, you get on the stage and you're showing your gifts and yeah. it becomes an ego trip. It was never that with me. I couldn't, not that I didn't want to, but intentionally, um, I had no choice. Spirit has come to me many times. People say, what are you talking about, spirit? There is a quality in most human beings that raises them up above the argument, above the negativity. And that's what I want to do. Our people, people of African ancestry, have had a terrible time from the beginning of our beginning here till today, uh, trying to overcome oppression, trying to overcome hate. And so when I wrote that album, the first album, the song in there, first one is, but it comes out mad. Okay, yeah. We have to love, we have to go and, and do work every day, we have to be creative, but somehow the, 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 the terror that we have experienced and still experiencing uh, makes a difference and it comes out mad. So I had to explain, I had to talk about my father, uh, born in, in Alabama, coming through all the terrors of that experience, but being able to overcome it. Um, today, uh, you know, what's happening in Washington today, the anniversary of that attack on our yeah. really, uh, we have to, be aware of those people, of those energies. And my thing was to stop the damage. My father was damaged by that experience. In Chicago, there was a lot of damage on our people. So I said, I'll use my, my art, my storytelling to identify that damage and then help get rid of it. That's what I do. Yeah. But, but It Comes Out Mad was one of those songs. Yeah. What can people do today to uh, get in line with that spirit and with that thought of moving together in the same direction for a common cause? Uh, well, it's on the front pages today. 
it goes back to our story. Who are we really? When we recognize who we are, our ancestors will tell us of that. Um, yeah. We'll develop, we'll understand how strong we are. You said we come from not from people who gave up all the time. No, we struggle for good and yeah. for better. You see, when we do better here, everybody does better. You know what I mean? When we were not on television, we worked to get on television. Now everybody's on television. So it's, it takes, there's a joy in doing it. There's a joy in confrontation that which is destructive and say, no, I have this that goes beyond it. I have, you, you want me to hate you? I'm not gonna hate you. I hate what you do, but <laughs> I'm not gonna let hate come yeah. to me. I'm gonna go beyond that and write my songs and do my dance uh, and, and tell my stories. So I'm having a good time in one way, except that there are a lot of people who say, shut up. <laughs> but today, today, the whole country is, is trying to find, go back and find the bottom line What's the, what is the truth of, of our existence as a people? Because the whole world is going through that same thing of uh, uh, self-discovery, of sharing our humanity. And so all of my books, I have this one, uh, The Shimmer Shine Queens. Yeah. That's about two, two young girls born in what is called a ghetto. I call it the redlined uh, districts who manage through art through bringing a family together to surmount it, to go beyond that. Uh, that's what I do. Tamika, and, the, and in all of these books, there are songs and poetry. So Tamika and the Wisdom Rings, you always go back to find what, was, what helped you in the back. You can use it right now. And so yeah. her, her parents gave her three rings to show ancestry. So all of that is what I use. I think I'm answering your question, I'm not sure. But today, yeah, the question is, let's, let's tell the truth. Let's not say that uh, uh, we shouldn't read history books. Let's not say we shouldn't tell the truth of our history. Face it, there are races in the country and they did terrible things to our people. Okay, that was then your ancestries, your European Americans' ancestries, did terrible things that was then know it but go beyond that you're here today no sense yeah. in just hating and carrying on anymore yeah and you know your book what inspired you to write the book uh that you published um your book on on cornrow well it wasn't our lives were different than than now there were times coming out of the south where we were still hiding our hair as a people coming out of enslavement, we were taught that we didn't have hair, we had wool, like a sheep or something. And so we, were, we would hide it until yeah. we went to church. Then we, then we went to church and we'd straighten it and do a whole yeah. thing that look pretty. Okay, but when we came out of that church, we went back to covering our hair, to hiding it. So my thing was, and others too, but they didn't write the book about it, um, was to give roots to the cornrows. Roots meant going back to the motherland. That's where it started. Yeah. And I, I was sad, I was sorry to see people ashamed of their hair and hiding it. So no, 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 put it out there, give it the crown that it deserves, it is your crown. So that yeah. is what started me to, to write that book. And especially for, other, all of my books are family books. That one starts, these books start with children. And then you see the, the elders bringing in information to the children so we can yeah. love ourselves. And of course that book still stands today. It impacts young people today. Absolutely. People still are worried about, you know, how their hair is this way and that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Braided, under braided, over braided, up and braided, down, braided in circles, braided in angles, and you wear it like a crown, you understand? There you go, yeah. Yeah, I still remember the smell of the hot iron and all that stuff yes. back in the day. And the burn neck. <laughs> in the burning <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind hey, of the, <laughs> someone else. But yeah. our hairs, I, I often use this expression, I used it way back in the 70s also. Uh, our hair has a mind of its own. It just, <laughs> it just keeps going home. <laughs> no matter yeah. what. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find a way to go get myself a haircut right about now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm trying to get mine together. I want a big fro the way I used to have. when Oh, I was yeah, yeah. I tried it a couple of years ago, uh -huh. <laughs> the big pro. 
You didn't. It worked out well until so some people said, "Oh, you're going back, huh?" Yeah, it doesn't have to be humongous, but give it the respect. That's all. Exactly. That. Exactly. So, um, what are we working on now? We, you have something that you're working on now that we should know about. I know you were in a, a number of commercials that came on TV. My song was in the commercials, yes. Right. We've come a long, long way together. I have to praise you. Right. My, my work, and thank God for those commercials and for the unions, which yep. back up because, uh, especially now in this time of, of horror in some ways and people dying and having disease. Uh, yeah. You have to have something, some something else, to to rely on, and so now I forgot what you asked me. What did you say? What was that? Uh, the stuff that you're, you're working on today, oh, but yeah. we did mention the, the commercials that your songs were in. Right, I am um, working on an autobiography, which tells a story of something of what I said before. Spirituality. Yes and how I had to combine my efforts as a performer with that. There were times when, you know, we were just snatched out of our homeland with leaving traditions, thousands of years of traditions and practice and brought over here. But the African part is still inside. We yeah. don't say it because we were brutalized. We had to not think of Africa anymore during that. Uh, take it from your mind. But those things were still inside. And I found that on occasion, they would come out in me, would express itself. One time I was on the stage at Forge Theater in, in Washington, D.C., uh, in a play, God's Trombones, I think it was called, or Trumpets of the Lord. They had the two names to it. And something people say, some people say, you got happy. I didn't get happy. The spirit, the spirit came out. Yes. Yeah. At the end of the show, when we're on all singing, some glad I'm here, oh, some glad I'm here. I couldn't sing it anymore. I was supposed to be clapping and I wasn't clapping and I wasn't singing and we're all uh -huh. singing at the set. And I, was, I wanted to reach out to the audience and talk to them. Finally, at the end, I was able to leave with the rest of the cast. But backstage, yeah. audience came and they were hugging and kissing and telling us how show, good the show was. But the producer came and he came to me and he said, what are you doing? What was that you were doing? <laughs> I, I almost got fired because of that. Wow. But yeah. the rest of the people who had come backstage were church people. And they said, leave her alone. She knows, we know what she's doing. You're the only person out here who doesn't know what she's <laughs> doing. So we all laughed about that. But I'm saying that to say that that energy will come out occasionally. And we need yeah. to pay more attention because that's the energy of Dr. King. That's the yes. energy of Marcus Garvey. That's the energy of all of our women who are strong. And that's what we have to recognize. And so in my work, that's what I do. I recognize. Well, listen, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you. We love you. And uh, you're always welcome to come back again. And I, can, I, I can't stop thanking you for writing that piece in my book, People to Know in Black History and Beyond. You open up that front page and you're yeah. right there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, brother. Love Thank you. you. Love you too. Thank you. Nana so Camille Yarbrough. Nana Camille Yarbrough. Uh, of course, she's an author, poet, singer, and songwriter. Yes. Going for you. We'll take a break right here. And um, Bobby C., he has the latest in the world of sports. More open cup it up next.